yeah this is the real deal so there aren't any lightroom presets or crazy color shifts this is just pure color infrared film and it's almost indistinguishable from aerochrome for those of you who don't know aerochrome turns vegetation into a vivid pink color which gives this crazy looking image so in this video i'm going to describe my method for recreating aerochrome it builds upon other aerochrome reproduction techniques but it's slightly more fine-tuned and in my opinion it creates the most authentic looking photo you can get so I'm not really going to get into the history of Aerochrome, since you probably already know what it is if you found this video. Anyway, uh, Aerochrome is an infrared film, but obviously humans can't see infrared. So to get around this, Aerochrome creates a false color image. So it does this by turning green colors in the real world into blue colors in the photo, and then red into green and infrared into red. And therefore it can kind of map the real world colors that we can't see into a false color image that we can see. Now you're probably wondering how on earth this turns trees pink. Well, this happens because vegetation has a rather unique characteristic of being extremely reflective to infrared light. If you look at this diagram, you can see the huge increase in reflectance for dry grass right after the visible spectrum ends. So this means that trees both reflect infrared light and green light because, you know, trees are green. And if we pull up the aerochrome false color conversion again, the green color turns into blue and the infrared turns into red and blue plus red is pink. So how do we recreate this? While color infrared film is no longer being manufactured, we still have black and white infrared film, and that's what makes all of this possible. We can use a method called trichrome photography to mimic a color photo by taking three black and white photos. It's quite intuitive, you simply take a black and white photo with a red filter, green filter, and then a blue filter, and then you can overlay these images and it turns into a color image. Now we can adapt this method to recreate aerochrome. Instead of using red, green, and blue filters, we will use an infrared, red, and green filter. However, simply using an infrared, red, and green filter is quite a naive approach, and this is where my method improves upon previous techniques. To accurately recreate aerochrome, you have to choose the right filters to match aerochrome's spectral sensitivity graph. And this graph is basically just telling you which wavelength the film is sensitive to. From this graph, we can see that the blue color is sensitive from 500 to 600 nanometers, green from 550 to 700 nanometers, and red from 600 to 900 nanometers. Using a combination of common color filters, we can recreate these ranges. And uh, in my blog post in the description, you can see exactly which filters I used and I go into a bit more depth on how I chose them. So this is what we've been waiting for. It's an overview of the process. Firstly, you take the photos with the correct color filters. Then in editing software, you can convert these black and white photos into their correct false colors. And finally, you can combine these images into your infrared photo. Now, there are a few caveats, of course. This method isn't perfect. The main issue is that it's just kind of annoying to have to set up a tripod and change out filters every time you want to take a photo. However, it does kind of cause you to slow down and think a bit about your shots, which is probably good because you only have 12 color images on one roll of 36 exposure black and white infrared film. Trichrome photography also causes colorful artifacts if there are any moving objects like cars, people, or clouds. And you can see this in the photo up here with the rainbowy clouds, but in my opinion, it looks pretty cool, so it's not that much of an issue. I also had a lot of difficulty nailing the exposure for my infrared photos. Most camera light meters aren't calibrated for the infrared wavelength, so a lot of my shots had exposures that were way off. But thankfully, black and white negative film has an extremely forgiving exposure latitude, so all of the shots were salvageable, albeit with a little bit of extra grain, which isn't too bad. And as a bit of a side note, while we're looking at the raw black and white images, look at how much the vegetation pops in the infrared images. It's, it's pretty crazy. Another issue is that you have to shoot in direct sunlight since clouds block out infrared light. But I mean, this is just a characteristic of all infrared photography. So in this image, you can see that the grass that's in the shadows is completely dark and not pink at all. Anyway, this is another photo which I found really cool because if you look closely along the edge of the water, you can see a bit of a pink smear. And this is actually moss living on the rocks. The moss is almost invisible to the naked eye, but it's really obvious in infrared. Okay, last little cool fact. If you zoom in on this photo, firstly you can see that film has a really insane resolution. But anyway, see those little yellow dots in the bushes? Those are actually roses. So a rose is vegetation obviously, but they're red not green. So the red is turned into green, and the infrared is turned into red. And red mixed with green is yellow, which is pretty cool. Anyway, hope you found this video useful. Once again, there's a lot more detail in my blog post, which is linked in the description. And my website also has my email if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.